Hi, everyone. My name is Alexandra Zatarain. I'm the co-founder of Eight Sleep, the world's first sleep fitness company. And join us in this conversation to learn more about the power of sleep and living a healthier life. Alexandra, welcome to Everford Radio. It's a pleasure to have you. Yeah, thank you so and much. thank you for coming to my home no, all the way in Miami. Um, I always look forward to these excuses, really, for opportunities and experiences. Um, and again, like this whole this whole weekend, I know it's a big event for you all in Eight Sleep to kind of get more of the the brand and the experience out there. And just I think for for everybody, honestly, just coming together live in person is is always welcome. Yes, very much yeah. needed. Yeah. Um, first question I have for you out of the gate. Of, of a few. And um, I'm, I'm curious because it's a little part of my life as well. Being a co-founder with your husband, I've heard you talk about um, you're kind of like the yin to his yang and you know, <laughs> you're, you're kind of pulling him down from the pie in the sky. So I'm always trying to find ways to provide <laughs> support <laughs> you know, for, like for my wife and other people, you know, and kind of the entrepreneur mindset, the creative mindset. Um, because you do bring a lot of value to the table in that way for people like, like myself and a lot of other people watching. What advice would you give to that person? You know, how do you support, especially a significant other, how do you support and fuel that dream while keeping us kind of, you know, tethered to reality? Yeah, you know, for us, it works in a really nice way where we're working together, building the same business. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't something we ever thought about in the early years of our relationship. We didn't say, oh, will we ever be the couple that builds business together? But we definitely had some shared values. And I think it starts from that, especially when you're working with your partner. It's like, do you have the same values? Do you want to take things in the same direction in your life? And we had certain ambitions and certain drive. And so when the opportunity arose to work together, Mateo, actually, my co-founder and my husband, he came up with the idea of Eight Sleep. So he sort of invited me mm. to join him on this because he trusted me that he I could be the person. Exactly. Well. Yeah, yeah. It was him. And, you know, I know how that goes. It, it, it's, it's a risk because you also think, well, there's no plan B as a couple working together and building a business. That's it. You're giving it all. There's no backup plan. There's no other salary coming from mm. somewhere else. And what I thought is, do I, do I trust him? Mm. Do I trust him that not only will he like deliver results because at the end of the day, you don't know, you don't have certainty in business, but do I trust that we will figure things out together, whether it is on the personal side, because obviously working so hard as you do when you're building a business, you're going to be impacted on your personal life. Um, and that I also trust him, we will figure things out in business together. And then we'll have the patience to teach each other that we will have the open communication. And so trust was the most important thing. And it was a similar assessment also with our co-founder, who's not my partner or his partner, right? Right? So Max, who's our CTO and our other co-founder, it's the same decision. Do I trust him that we will figure things out and that we will have open communication, that we want the same things for the business? And I think that's like my number one recommendation is to really think in that basic principle. And if you have that sort of relationship, I think you can figure everything else out. Yeah. Who would have thought trust and communication, the foundations for not only a good relationship, yeah. but you know, uh, co-creators, co-founders and business as well. What I understand um, most about Eight Sleep, and we've had Mateo on the show before, I'll put that down in the show notes for everybody. Um, he really drove home for me this concept of sleep fitness. And I, I love that term. And when you just kind of think about it, it, it makes sense, right? Um, but can you break that down for us a little bit more? And I'm curious, what is your definition? And has that definition changed as Eight Sleep has grown, as sleep awareness and sleep education and health, you know, sleep health technology has kind of progressed over the years. Yes. Actually, sleep fitness didn't exist when we started Eight Sleep. It's an OG. It, we invented it. Oh, amazing. It. All right. We made it up. It's a term we defined to really explain our category and mm -hmm. what we're building, what we stand for, because what we realized when we started working on Eight Sleep was that the way we thought about sleep and sort of role it plays in our lives is very different. We don't see sleep and good sleep as like the end all. Mm. It's a means to an end. And we also believe this comes from, you know, Matteo in the early days thinking about the company and the technology. He had this sort of inkling to build something that would treat sleep as something that could be measured, that should be prioritized, and that can be optimized. Mm. And so that's different from just how everyone else talks about sleep. And when you look at how sleep is usually talked about in media or just like culture, you see that for the most part, sleep is spoken about in the context of illness. So they'll talk yeah, about insomnia, yeah, sleep deprivation, yeah. sleep apnea, right? Like, when oh, you're not wrong. sleeping enough. Yeah. Yes, exactly. But there's no language to talk about being healthy in your sleep. 
Mm. And if we don't have the language to define that, then how can we aspire to it? Excellent point. Yeah. You know, like yeah. how do I describe I'm like, yes, I'm doing great in my sleep. Like, what does that mean? And so <laughs> we saw that as an opportunity and we said, well, that's what we're really selling here. What we're the benefit, the ultimate benefit of our products is sleep fitness. And if you're sleep fit, you're going to live better. You're going to be healthier. You're going to live longer, like all the amazing benefits of getting good night's sleep. And that's why we made up the term. And in the end, what it means is that healthy state of sleep. Mm. When you are healthy in your sleep, you are sleep fit. And you're not always sleep fit in your life, right? Like if you're maybe, you hear a lot about this from parents, if you have a newborn, probably you're not sleep fit for a few months in your life. That's fine. Mm -hmm. It's just like the journey in fitness, like physical fitness, where you could be very fit and then maybe you're less active for a period of time. So it's a process. It's a lifestyle. But at the end of the day, when you are sleep fit and you wake up, how do you feel energized, ready to take on the day? You know, there's all of the, the health yeah. and the productivity yeah. and the energy and the mindset is there. And that's how we define it. And that's what we really advocate for. Um, I, this uh, analogy just kind of came to me as you were describing it. And it, it's, I've heard this before, but now it's just a reimagining. Sleep fitness make, made sense to me, but how, how you were describing it is, is spot on to how I think a lot of us kind of take on our day. And especially a lot of the content I talk about topics here on the show is, is really, is, is your fitness. And we've got great workout days and we've got not so great workout days. We've got days where we were really on par with our, our wellness goals, our diet, but putting sleep in place of diet, putting sleep in place of workout, I think is a relatively new concept yes. or is one that's, that's growing. Um, can you maybe just go a little bit deeper there and really just peel back a layer on it's a mindset approach. It, it's a, it's a change of your perspective to an aspect of something that you're trying to get better at. Right. Yeah. It doesn't always have to be pass or fail. Yeah. And it's really foundational and you're right in the sense that for the most part of when you think being healthy, mm -hmm. people say, well, I have to eat well, I have to work out and then maybe like sleep. Right? And then that's it. That's yeah. it. But sleep is the last one we think about. And even if you see what has happened in culture, there's been sort of revolution and changes in fitness routines and all the movement for people to get active and definitely a lot of nutrition lately, but no one's doing that for sleep yet, mm. obviously, until maybe we showed up. But what we talk a lot about, and actually Matteo may have shared this when he spoke with you, but he, he talks about this concept of doing like a sleep stretch. He says, what if hmm. you just tried it for like a week where maybe instead of like trying to meditate every day for 30 minutes, plus a workout, plus uh -huh. this, plus that, yeah. you just take some of that yeah. time and instead you get more sleep. Wow. Just see how you feel. And for people that go through that as an experiment, they'll realize that they're going to feel so much better because sleep is actually much more important to your health, to your longevity, and to how you will feel than anything else you can do for your health. Anything. It's been it's been tested. It's been you know, there are a lot of scientific experiments. There's one very interesting experiment that was done with with rats where they show that they die sooner of food deprivation of sleep deprivation than food deprivation. Wow. So meaning like if we take away food, you would live for longer. There's a reserve in your body. Yeah. yeah. But if you take away sleep, you die sooner. I've heard that. Um, I don't think a lot of people have done this, and I wouldn't recommend it. Um, but they actually, this is the only thing that has been banned from the Guinness Book of World Records, people trying to go um, as long as possible without sleep. Interesting. The, you can go, the human body can go days, well, weeks without food. It, you can go days without water, but actually there's, I forget the number, I'm going to look it up. Um, human beings cannot go really that long without yep. sleep. And the side effects aren't just like an illness, it's, it's death. Yeah. So it just goes to show you how essential sleep is correct and I, I love i mean what you're talking about is just the foundation of habit stacking the foundation of perspective and mindset and instead of thinking of what you don't have in, in ways that you're struggling most likely going to struggle to get what you want just look at what you already have and just shift shift it. shift priority yes. shift time it's all that time allocation yeah. and people will really feel better and so then it becomes a habit suddenly mm -hmm. you realize what you were missing I think a lot of people go through life, you know, people say, I only sleep for hours or six hours, mm -hmm. or maybe they're sleeping for a long period of time. It's terrible quality. They're waking up a lot. They're tossing, mm -hmm. turning all night. And when you do get that good night, you're like, wow, I'm living as a zombie. <laughs> I'm feeling very different when I'm going through my day. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of what we do from the brand perspective at Eight Sleep is 
we can't just speak to people in a condescending way and be like, you need to sleep eight hours every night, right? There's life. We're not going to tell you like, leave your phone out of your bedroom. Like, yeah, come yeah. on. Like, mm. you know, I'm on my phone up until like 10 minutes before I'm sleeping. So <laughs> it's about so many other things that you can realize that you can adopt in your life. And from a company that's trying to advocate for that, because we're a mission driven business, it is about finding ways to just connect the message mm. versus imposing it. And we've seen a tremendous shift just in the last couple of years and how the message is received and how much more people are looking for what's the right way to be healthy and mm. what are the things they should be paying attention to. I'm curious, what has it been like on your side of the fence um, as someone who has become over the years much more interested in improving your sleep quality while running parallel a company that helps you do that? Are you seeing the industry as a whole and eight sleep as well is the focus becoming more on awareness of just sleep and how do we just get people to first pay attention or is it actually the recognize recognizing that we actually need all of these other tools we need this technology to really get to the finish line of what we're after yeah it's a great question because it's been like faces mm. if you think about what started happening maybe around 2014 2015 that's around the time like Mateo started looking into mm. what was happening in the world of sleep and we launched like our first product on crowdfunding this is like sounds prehistoric um but go down memory lane that's exactly good, yeah. <laughs> that's like way back yeah. when we were young and it was a lot around tracking at first and first the understanding of like how much am I sleeping and people were obsessed when eventually they could track their like deep sleep, oh, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's great because it educated, it mm -hmm. created that foundation of what am I doing, the awareness in my own body. Now the attention is more on like the tools that will actually help me improve. Mm -hmm. So you see a lot of supplements, you see mental mm -hmm. health apps, you see products like Eight Sleep, but it needs to go beyond the numbers. That's always been what we believe at Eight Sleep and why we build our products the way we do, which is you need to know, you need to measure, you need to prioritize, which is the habits. And that comes a lot from like the culture and the conversations, but then you need to optimize. If you don't optimize it, there's only so much you can really do with the data. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there's much more attention on that now, I think mainly because there's been more conversations on the impact of our environment while we sleep, your bed, your pillow, but also the temperature on your bed, on mm -hmm. your bedroom, air quality, humidity, right? Like there's a lot of other things that will impact how you sleep. All of the things. And there's yeah, technology truly. being developed to manage that. So if you, if you take a look at just how we have changed as humans, all of us that are adopting these products, mm. a lot of it is just influenced by the products that have been available in those different moments of our lives. You hit on a key topic that is always um, of interest to me and I always pick up when my guest brings it up, mental health. How important is sleep? How important is improving our sleep quality for our mental health, if you can touch on that at all? It's, it's huge. I mean, the reality is that probably most of the impact that you have from your sleep is going to mm show up in your mental health and your emotional stability. Uh, you know, yeah, absolutely. That yeah. is where it shows up a lot. Mm. It's just how irritable you are, how you react to circumstances during the mm. day. And that's actually such a key benefit to discuss for people because if you want to be better with your partner, with your kids, with your colleagues at work, with your mm. boss, sleep is a great way to manage all of that stress and process all of the things that happen during your day. You need to let your brain process everything emotionally and mentally and we don't have a lot of moments to do that yes mm. it's great obviously therapy and meditation there's a lot of practices of like just stillness mm. but sleep is such a natural thing that has been built and created mm. in her biology yeah. to be able to process all yeah. of that emotion i'm curious what have you picked up on the most um it's so fascinating to me people that become interested in something and then they create a, a product or a service around it I have to assume that you also run like, I want the success of my company to grow. and also want the success of my personal interest in this. What have you realized about your own sleep habits while understanding it more, getting more biofeedback um, as the industry grows and, you know, science gives us more information. Are you finding that you've got a pretty set sleep routine? Are you finding that your body is, is set if you just honor and build the conditions around it? Or are you evolving and changing as, as life and everything changes along with it? It has changed a lot. You know, we've been working on Eight Sleep for a few years, and I've aged to a certain degree, obviously, it in those all of years. Us. Yeah, it happens bit. to all of us. <laughs> and I have noticed my sleep changing. When we started Eight Sleep, I feel like, 
when I was younger. And I, I've always generally been a great sleeper. And Mateo makes fun of me because I'm Mexican. I grew up in Mexico. Mm -hmm. And so there's the, apparently this world fame for us being great at taking naps. <laughs> but I am one of those Mexicans. I, I'm a really good sleeper. But what I have noticed is just one, my awareness of when I'm not getting a good night's sleep is much higher. I'm just, I'm, I'm not just letting it pass and say, oh, I just had a bad night's sleep. I'm trying to really understand what happened. So it, it actually pops up on your radar yes. more, more often, more And rather quickly. than dismissing it, right? Just, uh -huh, well, I yeah. didn't sleep well. I'm really trying yeah. to understand what did I do differently? Mm. Did I travel recently? Did I change something in my diet? Mm. You know, for women, we are greatly affected by our cycle. Mm -hmm. And just the time of the month we're in has a huge impact on the quality of our sleep. And I've become more aware of that, again, as I've gone through the years and I have all the data that I've been tracking with the eight sleep technology, but also using other tools to understand like what's happening in my body. That has been just a tremendous shift for me oh, I bet, because yeah. then I can be prepared. Yeah. Maybe I know that a certain time of the month is coming. I'm going to have mm -hmm. more sleep. I'm going to have, my body's going to feel warmer. So I need to adjust the temperature on my You're bed. You're not as cut off guard. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And so just that sort of preparation. We talk a lot about eight sleep internally. One of our values is to have the athlete's mentality. Mm -hmm. And I think that applies just to our everyday life too. It's like, how would an athlete treat or how should they be treating mm -hmm. their sleep? They should be very connected to it, very in tune, listen to your body, and also try to document and optimize things. And I don't think you have to overdo it. I actually have a pretty simple routine. You were talking about like whether it's a set routine. Yeah, it's would very you mind simple. to share? Yeah, yeah, I love simple. Yeah, it's simple. And I think it's probably, I'm just blessed because I'm a good sleeper. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's consistency. It's very important to go to bed around the same time every night and wake up at the same time, even on weekends. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, and it has yeah. shifted a bit when I was living in New York. I think we were waking up much earlier. Yeah. Now in Miami, we wake up a little bit later, but it's consistent. <laughs> and that's what matters. I'm consistently sleeping in. <laughs> exactly. I'm consistently getting like nine hours every night. I'm not kidding. Get a lot of sleep. And that is the number one rule. I always tell people, if you want to try something, I don't care if you have a pod for my sleep or not, whatever product you have, just be consistent with your sleep. You're going to see a huge difference. You make enough time for sleep as well. If you're building a routine that's going to force you, it's like when you're sleep training babies, I don't right, have babies, sure, but yeah, I've heard. Yeah. You know, you I've heard, have yeah. a routine. So it's the same thing we need to do as adults. The other thing that I do is there's no using TV in the bedroom. Mm. So no watching things in bed, very minimal reading in bed. Mm. Um, but pe some people do find that reading will calm them and will help them fall asleep. That's fine. But just not spending a lot of time in bed prior to falling asleep is best for sleep hygiene because then you know really. the bed is for relaxation and sleeping okay. and you're not doing a lot of activities in bed. Hmm. Um, so that is another one that we really adopt. Again, I'm on my phone up until when the moment I go to the bedroom. So I'm sitting on the couch, I'm watching TV, I'm on the phone, just like most people. Yeah. But then I leave you my leave phone at the here. nightstand. Yeah. No, I, I take it to the bedroom. Or excuse me, you, like, you leave yeah. that habit out here. You exactly. don't you bring that into the exactly. bedroom. Exactly, yeah. yeah. I don't work mm. on the bed or I'm not taking my laptop there. Um, the other thing too, I think my sleep routine really starts from the moment I close down my computer. Mm. Because most people carry their work stress into the bedroom yeah. and that's what keeps you up at night. Yeah. So for us as a couple working together, at some point of the day, we need to close the computer. We're maybe on on the phone, something happens, fine. We're entrepreneurs, that's the life we chose. But I'm not actively sitting in the computer really past like 7, 7.30. Okay, okay. And, you know, 7.30, you'll have dinner. And so that starts a process. You're putting a wedge in, in, yeah. in between you and like the next, the next phase of your day that you want. Correct. Yeah. And I think just supplements are pretty simple for me. I don't take daily any sort of melatonin or, mm. you know, things to help me fall asleep. Maybe on the weekends I would, you know, if I want to just like further deepen my sleep on a Friday night after a heavy week, we'll do that. Listen for like CBD plus melatonin mm. combination. But other than that, it's just simple. I don't drink much coffee and mm. uh, we don't drink alcohol. So that has also helped improve the quality of sleep. Um, let's go there, please. Um, to just always hot topics, I think, caffeine and alcohol. Um, besides really everything you've been talking about and getting consistent with my sleep health over the years, um, becoming more aware of my total um, caffeine consumption and when, uh, as well as reduction in alcohol consumption, those two have been probably 
besides consistency, just the next two and three most important things for optimizing my sleep. Um, I'm curious if you can relate. So I have decreased my sleep or excuse me, decreased my caffeine in terms of milligrams. Um, now me kind of getting wild is about 300 milligrams of caffeine. That, okay. and, and most days I try to keep it around 200. And I also have a caffeine cutoff time of my ultimate goal is noon. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes I'll be flexible up to maybe like 2 p.m. But I really shoot for 12. Yeah. Um, and then reduction in alcohol. And the big thing that helped me with that, because a lot of people think, oh, let me get a nightcap. Let me have a couple more drinks to like really doze off into sleep. And that might technically help you get to sleep, but you're not getting quality sleep. Um, and to your point earlier, awareness and feedback was really what was the nail in the coffin for me of like, Chase, reduce the alcohol significantly um, and also don't drink it as late at night. And that was through certain devices yep. and getting feedback and things like that, you know, like whoop and smart beds. Um, is that, would you agree? And has, has that kind of been your, you know, approach to caffeine? Yeah, that's kind well? of what happened. I was never a big coffee drinker, so that mm. helped. I don't need it naturally energized person in the morning. I just love it. I but just, exactly. Yeah, I, just love it. Like I think taste, it's a routine. It's my a family's taste. in the business growing up too. So oh. I've got some like nostalgia attached yes. to it. So yeah, it's a moment for sure. Exactly. Yeah. So I still do that early in the morning and that's it. I'll have maybe like one, but it's like more milk than coffee probably for me. <laughs> um, which is, that's conducive which, towards your goal. Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. It's fine. It works. It works. Getting some coffee flavored milk. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Then the alcohol, it was similar to what you're describing, where it was sort of a test mm. uh, at some, maybe it's going to be like three years now that we stopped drinking. Mm. And, you know, you, you go through that phase that you're mm. describing. Let me get a nightcap. Yeah. Let me just, you know, make a drink. You get home and you've worked until late and it became a habit. Mm. And we didn't need it, right? You, you have to find a new way to decompress mm. and build that moment. So at a certain point, we decided after a trip, we had been traveling and we just had been having a lot of alcohol every night in that trip. And we decided, let's try it. Let's try it when we got back home, just a week without it. We felt totally fine. Let's go two weeks. And we just felt really good. And I think it helped that both Mateo and I as partners did it together, right? Like when you live in a household, then Excellent if it's point. only one of yeah. you, it's yeah. harder. So it was it was easier to sort of give it up for a period of time. And then we just stuck to it. We're like, oh, we really don't need it. What if we just try this as a lifestyle? Mm. But we have had replacements, meaning we don't just forget about the moment that we wanted to create. I know what you mean, yeah. Now yeah. there's it's amazing in the last couple of years how many brands have popped yeah. up of just like alternative drinks. And, you know, we make our own sort of like diet, tonic water with some like little – flavor here and there have and you like, done this my wife and i what we'll do a lot of times is we'll take a kombucha yes put it in like the most bougie cocktail glass we have that's or what we do yes just, yeah it's 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 the habit it's the yes. it's the ambiance it's that 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 thing that you think you're supposed to keep doing just because you used to do it exactly and you also don't want to drink let's just like water Right. Yeah, yeah. So you want something that's kind of interesting. And so I'm really happy to see so many brands mm. just popping up in that space because yeah. then it creates similar to what we were describing with eight sleep and talking about making like sleep cool and all of that. There's so many brands now making the fact that mm. you want to be sober or you just want to be sober curious, making it cool, right? <laughs> yeah, you yeah, don't feel exactly, ashamed yeah. at the bar yeah. to ask for something that's alternative. Yeah. I've got these incredible uh, new like functional mushroom drinks that I, that I drink. Shout out Cured Nutrition. Um, and I will bring them to parties. It's just sparkling water, like natural flavor, and uh, like you know a little bit of lion's mane, functional mushrooms, some CBD, and I love the way it makes me feel. Yeah. More importantly, I love the way that I don't feel after drinking alcohol, and you know even having something like that that's got like a nootropic effect, I'm lit you know, during yeah. a pregame or like a party or like a, you know before we're going to a concert or you know I will bring it and it looks again you're fitting the part. I bring a six pack. But it's a six pack. I'll have to try health. those. It's amazing. Yeah, we had an, an event here last night at our home with my team, and we. Mm. I'm like, well, we need to get some beer because I think. Our yeah, colleagues it's what we're are supposed to do. Want right? some beer, yeah, right? Yeah. And but we had a bunch of our other drinks. We were kind of showing everyone, like, well, here's some other alternatives that you can oh. have. Oh, I'll have to sit. I'll, I'll get you some of the cured drinks. Yeah, it's I want to try. It. Um, it's it's so good. Um, I want to ask you. You brought up earlier the, uh, napping. I cannot nap. I will lay there. I'll try to nap. I'll do all the things, and I used to do that because I thought, oh, well, it's again, something that I should do. Or if I'm actually the beginning of my sleep journey, when I was trying to optimize my sleep health, I, I thought that that was something I needed to do kind of first 
because it just, I wasn't doing it. So let me try it. Um, how important is napping? Is it essential? Should everybody do it? Do we need to do it for our just our, you know, seven to nine hours kind of overall sleep health? I mean, if you're sleeping enough, mm. that's probably why you cannot fall asleep and take a nap in the middle of the day. Okay, so cool. So I got that going for me. That's a big right, thing. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's like if you're getting enough sleep during the night, that's ideal, right? If, if you remember sort of the, the thing of the circadian rhythm and like right. the time of the day when we should be asleep and the role that light plays and all of that, you should be getting sleep when it's dark. And it's sort of counterintuitive to our bodies to force it to go to sleep mm. when it's just bright sunlight. But the moments when you do feel like you're sort of sleepy or you didn't get enough sleep in the night, you can take a nap. But it's mm. not a substitute. And I think a lot of people mm. may fall in that pattern. We're like, oh, I'm only going to get like six hours and then I'm going to go on a two-hour nap. Like, no, it's not the same quality well, of sleep at that just, time of the day. Let me try to just, you know, kind of make up here and there. Thing. Yeah. Okay. It, it can't be a substitute. Mm. It can't be like a, a routine where you're doing it all the time because ideally you should get that sleep in the evening. Or in the time when it's dark, wherever you live. I want to shift gears and talk more specifically about the technology. Um, technology, I think, is amazing. And especially when we look at it through the lens of human optimization, of resiliency, of reducing our, you know, our biological age, so to speak, or you can't reduce that, but, you know, aging well, uh, feeling our best. There are a lot of things we can just do all natural, right? But we live in a modern world to where we can have wearables, we can have smart homes, we can have smart devices, we can have smart beds um, to get this feedback. But where does the technology possibly pose new problems? In particular, um, I'm talking about, you know, 5G, EMF, Wi-Fi, and a lot of these devices, and correct me if I'm wrong, 8Sleep uses to get this information and to share it. Um, what is being done there to mitigate that? Is it something we really need to worry about? Um, how do we advance while not also causing more problems potentially? Yeah, yeah. It, it's a good point. And I, you know, the way we've defined the product and we've designed it to operate, mm -hmm. obviously, being in your bedroom is to be very comparable to what you would already be using. Like, it's like a computer. Okay. The, the more problematic devices in this respect are actually the devices that are connected to a cellular network. Mm -hmm which is a phone. Okay. Which we all have on our pockets all day. Yeah. Right? But anything that's just Wi-Fi connected, it's very different. It's going to have very low influence mm. in all of these things that you were describing. And so we shouldn't be concerned similar to a wearable, right? Mm. We're all wearing these things all the time. I'm double dipping over here. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so that's not a big concern and it shouldn't be a concern because there's that difference in classification. Mm. A lot of people hear like, phones are terrible. You shouldn't keep your phone in your pocket. And well, yeah, the phones are different. They're connected to a cellular tower. Mm -hmm. The type of power that they need to have to do that is very different. The connectivity they're going through is very different. Very true. Yeah. All these other yeah. devices, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, they're in a, in a different range it's very short range technically yeah. yeah yeah so it's not it's not a concern and then on the other hand too is there's more and more innovation in the space happening there's more development in like mm. the types of wi-fi connectivity you use the chip so that's only going to get better because it's inevitable that all of the products that we use day in and day out are going to be connected in some way or another so yeah, we can run away so. from it you yeah. know and so like you'd really need to uh, like we all need to realize the impact that technology can have for the good mm. and just making sure the products we're bringing to our lives to do that are offering some level of benefit. And it's not just adding technology mm. for no reason at all. And we're just adding more and more connected devices in our homes. Beautiful answer. I, I agree. And I, that also is food for thought. And I, I think this is where I encourage everybody to do your own homework, to do your due diligence. Um, if you're talking about maybe introducing something new into your diet, if changing a habit, a medication, trying a new workout, um, do your homework. Yeah. You know, look at these different things. Um, there's a lot of great information out there. The other thing as well is that it's about experimentation, meaning uh, yes. I always N tell people, one, yeah. like even with the Eight Sleep Pod, you know, I, it's my company, but if it doesn't work for you, that's mm. fine. Like we don't have to do what we hear other people are doing all mm. the time. We're all different human beings. We all need different things. Absolutely. We're all different based on age, gender, lifestyles, genetics. And so especially with our health, mm. like you said, try see what works for you yeah. and don't just adopt fads because you think that that's the thing everyone should be doing. Yeah. I actually have that example with intermittent fasting. Oh, interesting. It doesn't okay, work so? for me because Same. Yeah. just it doesn't. Mm -hmm. And I realized that because Mateo is huge and fasting and works for him. He feels very energized. I can see that for him for sure. So, yeah, I can yeah, see that for him. Yeah. He's like once a day. <laughs> and for a few years, you know, 
living together, you sort of adopt similar habits, I would do the same. Mm. And then I started using my levels. I use my level CGM. Yeah, the CGM, yeah, yeah. And um, I, I love the product. Right and now, yeah. I realized that why it didn't work for me. I would mm. always wake up hungry. And Mateo would be like, come on, how can you be hungry? Right? Like he does, he feels different. Yeah. And so you don't realize. Where's your willpower? Yes. Where's your motivation? I'm like, no, I'm telling you, like, I'm really hungry. Yeah. I don't feel low of energy. My levels show me that, that mm. my glucose levels would really dip in the night. Mm. And that if I go even many hours without eating or like snacking the proper things, my levels will just drop significantly. There you and go. so, you know, it's just my metabolism in that respect is different yeah. and I need different sort of diet and yeah, I adjust it. I'm curious, uh, do you all know, have you, have you dug deep at all into your chronotype? I'm curious. No, I don't think I've done that. He may have done. He, Mateo has done a lot. Of I bet he tests. probably has. But yeah. I'm curious, you know, as this is just kind of my unraveling of um, re when really looking to maximize or even just optimize a little bit. So a certain area of our life, and especially when it came to sleep for me, um, all the things we've been talking about, but also then kind of digging into my chronotype and mm -hmm. understanding like at my genetic core, what maybe am I more... Am I leaning more towards left, towards right? Yeah. What are my natural tendencies of when I wake, when I sleep, how I handle stress, when I work the best? Um, and metabolic health, absolutely, in my opinion, really does run very parallel to chronotype. So understanding quite literally who you are, what makes you up, is going to help set you up for success in the habits you're trying to make or change. True. Um, one other question, kind of getting towards the end here. Uh, speaking of just getting to know yourself more, um, you come from a Hispanic background, correct? Yeah. And your husband comes from an Italian background. How does that influence not only your sleep, but where you want to take your company? How, how does keeping your roots, so to speak, empower you and excite you and give you maybe a, a, a secret sauce yeah. um, for keeping you guys running at the tip of the spear? Yeah, I think that we both have a little bit of that immigrant mentality. I'm sure for him, a lot of espresso too. Well, no, I take it back. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, at least he, running he, in not his not a lot of them, yeah. but exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. coffee is more natural yeah. to him. Um, but yeah, we're both. You know, he he grew up in Italy, mm. so he immigrated here. And for both of us, mm. English is our second language. Um, so yeah, you just I think you have that chip on your shoulder of mm. sort of proving and also taking advantage of the opportunities. You know, we both love living Absolutely, in this country. Yeah. I was born in the U.S., but I grew up in Tijuana, so I'm mm. sort of like the, the the border baby type, right? So like I always say, like the, that's one of the greatest gifts my parents gave mm. me, just to allow me to have been born in this country and have a right to work here and mm. vote here, and like that's why so many of us immigrate here, right? And so I think that that immigrant mentality is very much in our veins and just building that generational wealth for the first time for both of us, right? Like all of that, I think is a huge driver. And the other side of it too that we realize is in the way that we think of problems and solutions, we come from completely different cultures and yes, they're both beautiful yes, countries, yeah. but they operate very differently. Very differently, yeah. <laughs> so I My always... wife is Persian and oh, like really? just, even just approach, she's a first generation Iranian American and just quite literally almost daily how we just look at certain things in life. I can tell it's because I'm just traditional white guy born in America <laughs> and she's Iranian American Persian and it's just it's it's beautiful I, yeah. I think it's something that honestly I feel I say I'm trying to like unwhitewash myself I just become <laughs> so I love it's just having culture like there's just something to your core to your heart that is that is unique to every culture and every ethnicity I, I, I believe um, but it just stands out more I think in, in others at least for me yeah yeah, I see a lot of that, like the problem solving part. I actually hadn't realized it until maybe a year mm -hmm. ago. Someone asked me this question in an interview about what I thought my culture had given me that would give me sort of a unique edge in yeah. business. And I realized in Mexico, there's this unfortunate um, corruption that mm. occurs in everyday life and a lot of the things we have to deal with. But what that gives you is you yeah. need to be very resilient and you operate with the mindset that everything is possible because in a way everything is possible you know? <laughs> i got that, you okay you know? there we go and so <laughs> yeah, you, re yeah. you default to mm. finding a solution because obviously there must be a solution there must be someone else i can talk to mm. there must be some other back door right and that's kind of how i operate <laughs> in my life sometimes. <laughs> so, <laughs> i know a guy knows a guy you gotta go around back yes yeah. there's always a guy <laughs> Um, and so that's something that I saw growing yeah. up. And like I said, it's probably applied in the wrong way over there, but it gives you something. And that's just how I live my life. There's always a way and I'm going to find a way and I'm going to work with the right person to find the way. And 
that gives me, I think, an edge as an entrepreneur. Mm. Um, well, th thank you so much for opening up your home and sitting down with us here on Everford. Um, my final question that I ask everybody to kind of take your passion and your expertise and your profession and put it through the lens of, I say, living a life ever forward is to bring attention and awareness into these key areas of our life that can help us move forward, take a step to optimize, to thrive. Um, and it's a mindset, it's a perspective. And I'm curious, what does that mean to you? How would you say you live a life ever forward? Thing with intention. It's like really being in tune with what's my intention with everything I'm doing. What's my intention with that day's work? Mm -hmm. you, you can't just wait for that ultimate outcome. Mm -hmm. You can't be chasing the pot of gold and the other rainbow. That's not going to be a life that you're going to be happy about. Unless you about. know a guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe the guy has a pot of gold. Maybe you know a couple of gods or something. I don't know. Yeah. But the, you know, the daily, the daily intention, are you happy with mm -hmm. the day you're about to have in front of you? When you look at that calendar in the morning, are you happy about each mm -hmm. of the conversations you're about to have? Are you enjoying the people you're spending the time with? Are you enjoying the work, the challenges, the learning? I focus a lot on that and I enjoy it. And I'm lucky that I get to do that day in and day out and just staying in tune with that. And at the end of the day, the yeah. dots will connect and you'll live a happy life that brings you forward every day. And you'll go to sleep happier. And 100%. Less, less problems yeah. to worry about. <laughs> uh, well, Alexandra, again, thank you. We're going to have all of your information at Eat Sleep Down in the, the show notes and video for everybody. But if they want to learn more about you and this whole world of sleep fitness, where can they go right now? Twitter is probably the best place to find us mm -hmm. at Eight Sleep. You can find me to a underscore Zatarain, which is my last name. So yeah, just ping me there. Which uh, I was telling my wife, by the way, um, my interview when I had coming up and she was like, oh, is she Persian? Yes. Zatarain sounds like- I know, right? It's very, an like, interesting last name. So I know she's from Tijuana, but- um, There are apparently yeah. very similar last name, Persian last names to Zatarain, like Zacharain. There's like some versions of it. She was like, fine, is it Zatarain? Yeah. Or Zatarain? Like the sp spelling? I was like, ah, uh, let me get back to you on that. <laughs> um, I don't know the correct pronunciation, but she's like, I know some Zatarains. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, there's some versions of it. Yeah, but I think Persian it got versions some other way through Mexico, some like French, mm. Spanish, then to Mexico. Yeah. Well, uh, we're here now. And exactly. It's amazing. So again, thank you. 